Good morning, Space Cadets. Welcome back to Moon Farm. I'm Alex, and today I've got something very special for you. You may notice that the greenhouse is a little quiet. More on that later. It's actually, it's too quiet. Um, what's going on here? Oh, we flooded. Frick. Well, that's not good. This is going to freeze now. Actually, it might not. The greenhouse stays warm enough. But I'm betting that this tripped my GFCI outlet, and that's why the pump's not running. Nope. That's not working. So, I did shut down a lot of the systems that were in here. Something happened this month that, I mean, I nearly had a heart attack. Alright, so we're still on in here. It looks like, yeah, we blew a breaker. Okay, that's fixed. My electric bill was significantly higher than I expected it to be. And it was so high, in fact, that I can't justify running a lot of the electrical systems I'm running when I have not a whole lot coming out of this system. My ditch doesn't seem to be draining at all. We just dug this. I mean, I guess it is. We're just still holding water right up next to the greenhouse. I need to work on that to channel the water away from the greenhouse because right now it's just sitting. The kind of annoying thing whenever the pump gets shut down, for some reason, I've, I've got a check valve, right? So it shouldn't do this, but for some reason, it creates a siphon on this far end and sucks all the water back out of the pipe so in order to get the pump running again i gotta get a bucket and i gotta prime it manually that's something i gotta figure out i, I don't know how it's creating a siphon with that check valve in there oh i may have fixed it it may work itself out look all i did was pick up on the other end to get the air out of it and it looks like it it might have fixed itself Maybe I don't have to prime it. That would be nice. How are we looking? Okay. I got water coming out of those, so we're good. There's probably a bit of air in there that needs to work itself out, but we should be good. All right, I've got about 20 minutes till something exciting's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and get a fire started in here so I can warm it up just a little bit. I'll be back whenever something exciting happens. Ladies and gentlemen, the new contenders for employ... The new employees have arrived, and I would like to introduce you to two new members of the Moob Farm space crew. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to Lexi and Lemmy. They're really mad at me, and they're hiding in their crate. These two just arrived from a barn cat rescue. They are going to be pretty important parts of the farm and making sure that we keep rodents and stuff out of the feed and out of our animals bedding and stuff like that. In order to make sure that these cats don't just run away as soon as they're released, we set up this little crate system. It's two large dog crates that they will live in for about four weeks or so. And then after those four weeks, they're gonna have free range of this greenhouse for another couple weeks so that they can get used to being in this area. If you don't do this with semi-feral cats like this, there's a good chance that they just take off and they don't come back. So we wanna make sure that they stick around that they understand that I'm the one feeding them, that they can get food here, and that they should stick around and help me out. We've got some other work to do around the farm, so I am going to set up a time lapse and point it here at their crates and see if they're gonna come out and say hello. So I set up a time lapse and I left it running for over an hour while I went and picked up some stuff. And I got back and I noticed that the cats were pretty much in the same place they were when I left them. So, I guess here's the time lapse. Not very exciting at all, unfortunately, but they just arrived. They don't know where they are. They're confused. It's okay if they just wanna hang out by themselves. I'll try again in a few days. Hopefully I'll be able to introduce you to them in the short term. We got quite a few eggs today. That's good. My quail are laying like crazy. I have the incubator completely full of eggs right now. Uh, hatch and quail because I just have so many quail eggs. I've even got them on sale So if you know anyone that needs quail eggs, 
uh, let me know. We're gonna try something, and it may not be the best idea. Certainly don't take my advice and don't copy me, but under the advice of some experienced persons, I'm gonna try to do some modifications to my barrel stove to make it able to handle a lump of coal. I don't mean that I'm gonna burn coal full time. I'm not. That's a terrible idea. This stove is not designed for that. However, if I can modify it with fire brick and kind of build up the bottom and sides to prevent coal from burning through the bottom of the barrel, then it's possible that when I go home for the night, I could throw just one big lump of coal on there and that would burn all night long and help keep the greenhouse above freezing. I thought about doing something similar with my actual wood stove, this one over here that I showed you in the time lapse, but my fear is that the chimney on this guy is much, much, much longer and therefore much more room for chimney fires and other things that could be a big issue. It's just gonna be easier to maintain the chimney on that other one. It's gonna be easier to get it burning good and hot and then hopefully it'll do so safely. I'm definitely not planning to leave it overnight without testing it and spending all day watching it, fire extinguisher in hand, ready to go. But having the ability to do that would make that stove last a lot longer and would make it burn overnight with enough heat to hopefully keep this greenhouse a little bit warmer. We are burning well in this stove, producing quite a bit of heat. The way I've got it set up, I've actually got the ashtray open just a little bit so the air is coming up from the bottom and that's really keeping everything burning really really well there's a lot of heat coming through here with this door open i've got the fan blowing on it to try and distribute some of that heat got a really good draft though i can open the door and dead, no smoke is coming out at me while other me works on that double barrel let me tell you what's going on with the farm i started telling you this at the beginning of the episode I have to make a really hard decision. You see, earlier I installed this heater because the water was getting too cold. And a month ago I installed these lights because I live in Ohio and Ohio doesn't have enough light in December or January or February. Here's the issue though. I started running them and wouldn't you know it, they jacked my electric bill. I started looking at it all and really what I came down to is that it's too expensive to run the entire system when I'm really not getting much out of it yet. If this system was full and I was pulling a thousand heads of lettuce out of it each week, then it would be worth it to run the heater, to run the lights, to keep that all going and not lose out on that. Unfortunately, I haven't quite figured out the heat situation in the greenhouse and so the heater's run running too much. It's running inefficiently. The water is cooling off faster than I can even heat it. And in the end, it was way too expensive to run any of those things. So what I decided to do is I cut everything. I turned it off. The water pump's running and the air pump comes on for 15 minutes every hour just to make sure that the pipes don't freeze and. Nothing happens, but the lights, no more. The heater, nope, no more. Not right now. Maybe next season. I'd love to use them eventually, but right now, I can't justify it. Really, I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping that this whole thing doesn't just freeze. I guess I could open it as an ice skating rink, but that's not what I'd like to do. I looked at what was in here, and a lot of it should be harvesting in the next month, but it's not enough produce in here to pay for the electric to run the entire system. So I would lose less money if it did freeze and everything died. So that's why it's so quiet in here. Because it's cold, because stuff isn't growing well, uh, because I assumed things would work better than they did. I'm hoping that I get lucky and we get nice warm days every couple days that'll warm this greenhouse up. I'm hoping that with the wood burners, I can keep it warm enough that this doesn't freeze, but I just can't run the systems to guarantee that it's not going to freeze. I can't afford it. The water pump alone, it's a 750 watt pump 
and it alone is probably costing me about $80 every month just to keep the water moving. The air pump is also 750 watts, so if I run it 25% of the time, it's gonna cost me $20 or so to run it this month. That's nothing compared to the cost to run the lights and the cost to run the heater. The heater's the big one. These are only half the lights that I bought, but believe it or not, they cost me almost $200 this month to run. Somehow I didn't make that calculation right. The water heater though, that's what killed me. That water heater, it's on a 30 amp breaker running 240 volts. When it's drawing its maximum amount of power, it's pulling over seven kilowatts. A kilowatt hour costs me about five cents. So if I run that machine for a full hour, it costs me 35 cents. You do the math, 24 hours a day, 31 days in a month, it doesn't work out. And that's just the cost for the electric. They also charge me to get the electric to me, which is more expensive the more I use. And they also charge me when I use too much and you know I'm taxing the electric grid. I have to just cross my fingers and hope that this works. And if it doesn't, it didn't cost me anything, I guess. I really can't wait for it to start warming up outside. That's gonna save me a lot. I'm also gonna hope that this doesn't all freeze we're at 50 degrees right now. So in the last week we dropped 10 degrees, but I'm hoping that as the water temperature gets closer to the air temperature, it kind of evens out and we'll just stick it like 40 degrees for the entire winter. That's warm enough to grow lettuce. Not very fast, but it is warm enough. So that's what I'm hoping. And that's why I'm putting fire brick in my barrel. I'm gonna try to see if I can get that to hold more heat and get that safer to, to burn hotter burning substances. And there we go. I've got like an hour to kill. And then I'm gonna take Murphy to a vaccine clinic. He needs to get his rabies. I need to clean out the back of my truck seat. I'll be back soon. All right, Murphy and I are loaded up. Come here, bub. Murphy. We are loaded up. We are headed to Tractor Supply to get your rabies vaccine. Yes, you gotta get vaccinated. And then uh, we'll be back. Yeah, I know, you already miss your farm. All right, get back. We gotta get going. All right, Murphy. You ready? You ready? Yeah, let's go. Someone's excited. What are we doing here, huh? Murphy. What'd you think, bud? What'd you think? Was it, was it? It wasn't too bad. You got some kisses from the vet. Yeah, barely even felt it. All right, hop up. Up here. Come in. Murphy. No. Come on. Uh, uh. All right, got any knives, guns, anything I need to know about? No. Just love. All right, hop in. Go. Man, you make this hard. 100 pounds of fluff right there. Stinky boy. Stinky boy. Murphy is a stinky boy. You stink. You really stink. You smell like wet dog. You're a stinky boy. Well, Murphy, welcome back to the farm. Come on, bub. I know. Good boy. Murphy did so good. And when it came time to get his rabies shot, he was perfectly good. Didn't even react to it. He did such a good job. But now he is so tired from all of that excitement. This boy is so tired from this whole ordeal that I think we may do a little bit of, a little bit of this. Are you going to behave? You want to be a good boy? Yeah, you will. I know. He probably needs to poop. That was a lot of, lot of excitement. Nice. Nice. Murphy, are you a good boy? Murphy, come here. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Yeah, sit down. Oh, you're so happy. 
Good boy. As you can see, the sun is going down, so that's where I'm going to have to call it. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you'll subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video. Bye!